Eric Geyer for the sting. Ball takes a hop off the glass and Boreano settles for Child in the corner. Child right back for Boreano. Broken up. Batata and Drago collide. But Marrero will pick it up for Kuncharski. It's still scoreless 11-03. Left in the opening quarter. Batata tackled away by Whitman. Drago blocked by Whitman. Watch Savage. He'll be marking Drago for this game. Batata in the box and it was shot wide. Golden opportunity. Kuncharski missed. Drago again, and he puts this one into the seat and out of play. Wow. And the ball belongs to the blast on the goal kick from McCutcheon. The score in the opening quarter of play. Baltimore nothing, Chicago nothing. This is the MISL Game of the Week on ESPN. That's Matthew. Over to Buriano. Holding. Playing it up for Child. Now it's picked off by Matata. For Rojas. Hines first. For Batana. Nice run off the ball. Burks on the right side. Takes the shot. Score! Drago is 1 0. Heinz Burks, we mentioned at the top of the show, he was the man to watch coming up front. He made that good overlapping run out of the back, got some space on the right, and did put it over. It was touched by McCutcheon. Here you see where it gets past Matthew. Now watch the shot. It's going to be touched off the fingers, tip to the goalkeeper, right to Drago who is in exactly the good position to touch it home with the first goal of the game. And here you see Wurtz again. Wurtz has got to come up on this right side, and he does. The shot not handled cleanly by McCutcheon and touched in by Drago. Drago gets his 11th goal of the year from Wurtz. one nothing Chicago. Yeah, look at this pressure again by Baltimore. Up for Klopas. Baltimore doing some gambling there, but they're forced Chicago with some bad passes yeah. and no chances. They gamble a lot, and, and Kenny's philosophy is you go out and take the gambles, and I'll take the blame if they score. Klopas, left foot it shot wide. That might have even been a pass off those off the glass. You're automatically ready to say boys, but there really are none here. It's all off the glass. Off the glass for Chinapu. That's broken up. Rojas, maybe with a chance here, but Chinapu made a nice recovery. Played over to Klopas on the right foot. Magali. That ain't about it. Look at Drago getting a piece. Now Magali. Batata trying to settle 17 seconds left in the quarter. 1-0 Chicago. Still 35 seconds of the power play. Rojas shot. And McCutcheon robbed Drago on the doorstep. Here's Batata for Drago. Settle for Rojas. His drive is blocked. Drago hit her far post. Punch down. Rebound. Go bust too high. Great action as the horn down. What a finish to the opening quarter of play. Jay McCutcheon and the Baltimore Blast penalty killers. Keep the sting off the board that time. But after one, Chicago leads it. one nothing. the goal by Drago. His 11th goal of the season. Hines Burks getting the assist. 7.39 was the time. But look at the action here on the power play. McCutcheon comes up big. It's still one nothing. Chicago. Interesting positional play by both teams, particularly for my money, by Baltimore, who have perfected the art of sort of congesting the middle when it needs to be congested, maybe when the ball is there, not at not the initial part of the power play. Chicago still has 21 seconds left on the man advantage. I like the way they're playing, Seamus. They're playing pretty loose. They are playing loose. You can just see a, a whole different uh, attitude, it seems. There's, there's less tension. They're, they're playing less scared, or maybe that's too severe a word, uh, but uh, they, seem to be, uh, they seem to have a lot more confidence. So Chicago starts off here with a power play. Second quarter, they lead it one nothing. Lopas for Manny Rojas. Right side, it's Batata for Drago. Right back, but it'll come all the way out to Rojas. He settles it down. On his left foot, in front. Quick one wide. Nice deflection by Pat Magali. Batata. Now for Drago. The penalty is over. Michael Brady, who played at American University, is back on. He was only the second player at that school. Kermit Washington, the basketball player. The other to have his jersey retired. Long ball from Stanisic for Hutchin looking. And Batata bumps into Furphy. Or, let's check that. It is Savage. Savage is going to have his work cut out for him. Watching Drago is a full-time job. Especially because Drago goes so well side to side. His lateral movement is every bit as good as his movement straight on. That's right. And his positional play is very good. He's, he sort of ghosts around there for a little bit and then... Uh, hides on the boards a bit and all of a sudden can be a terrific target there you saw him almost getting one he wasn't quite as wide enough as he often is but he finds that he manages to find spaces where he can be hit with good quick passes there comes that left side whitman whitman in the box for child off a deflection and alonzo is there yeah child trying to set up brady in there he was the target man in the 
penalty area. Just trying to touch it back. Couldn't quite get the good touch on yet. Paul Child um, not looking as sharp as he has in some recent matches so far in this one. This is Paul Pumpy, a rookie from UCLA. And for Ben Collins. Teddy Kraft on for his first shift as well. In the box for Pumpy. Stopped by McCutcheon. Contact made on those boards far side. Kept alive by Kraft. Picked off. Murphy with a chance off the glass. Far side for Brady. Try to tow it back. It's blocked. Good second effort. And Kraft heads it away. Weissico kicked out of there by Alonzo. Collins with some great speed. We'll have to test it down. And he does. Ben Collins cuts it back. Shot score. Ben Sharsky. It's two to Chicago. Well, very intelligent play by Collins as the defense retreated before him. Fearing to make a commitment, fearing his skill, in other words, if they made a commitment, he might skillfully beat him. Look at how they back away from him. Now it's two on one. And if Brady does not get back in time to mark Klincharski on the far right side, and Klincharski just beats Brady for speed and vision, and is there at the end. Now look at this. He lets it get past one. They, they back off him because they fear he might trick him and go by. And Whitman's waiting for help. The help comes, but it's too late in the form of Matthew trying to close him down. But uh, the key man was Klincharski, who saw that he had a chance to turn this into a two-against-two uh, two situation, and he converted beautifully. Klincharski's fourth goal of the year. Ben Collins, the assist at 154 the second quarter. Chicago takes a 2-0 lead. Could pull McCutcheon with a 3.07 goals against average and bring in Van Aron at 2.87. I mean, what a, what a team. There's a look at Drago, who will serve a six foul. The team is normally, as you see, that McCutcheon is okay. Normally, you put one of your best attackers in the box because you want them to come out that's right. when you get the ball back. So that's not a punishment in any sense of the word. That's strategy when you put in your high score in the box. We should mention Drago, by the way, in case you're wondering about his appearance, uh, decided to shave his head entirely this year, not as a gimmick at all, but uh, to, to cope with the persistent problem he's had in recent years of, uh, of a condition called alopecia areata, which uh, is a disease that he has suffered from from the years and is brought on by stress and results in some of his hair falling out and looked on, really guys, quite grim and he decided uh, if this was going to happen to him, might as well just shave it all off. Uh, right. And he also changed uh, to just one name, Drago, much like a tattoo. His last name is Dumbovich or Dumbovic or Dumbovich and he was called different names in different cities so they just shortened it and he goes by Drago. What a player he is. Baltimore, second of San Diego on a power play with 42.1 percentage in terms of their clicking ratio. Watch out for Child at the far post on this, but a lot of guys here can put the ball away for the blast. Yeah, they really need a goal here to get their confidence going a little bit. That's it. Paul Child tips it in from Keith Burphy. They must have heard you from down there. Child from Burphy, and that puts him right back in it. Different game. Well, Child, I was uh, on his case a little bit mildly only, frankly, but because uh, I thought his touch wasn't that uh, on, but it certainly was on. Look at all the space in front of goal now. He's got to come running into that space. You see him coming in from the left of your screen, and there it is. He just touches it in beautifully. He withdraws first and then goes towards the ball. We'll take another look at it now. As this is going on, Child is making some moves in the box, goes towards the ball, then backs off it, and uh, loses his defender, who is Pat Magali, and uh, Stanisic is not able to stop it. So he, the critical thing is uh, how you move around with a penalty shot like that, not just the, the passing out front, but what's going on in the box, and Child an expert at it. Charles seventh of the year from Furphy at 10.35. Paul Charles third power play goal. Nice touch around the net. Ronson. Let's see what that does if it picks up Baltimore. Chicago knocking it back with Crumpy. Eric Geyer is getting in. Crumpy and Kraft early. He wants to give everybody a feel for this game in the opening half of play. You'd expect Baltimore would do the same. They've got a big game tomorrow against Kansas City. Furphy with a turnaround block. Whitman shot. Blocked by Stanisic. There's Furphy again. Too high. And Chicago not able to do anything with that ball in the box. Now Baltimore becoming more aggressive offensively, but this time they're forced back to McCutcheon, who was all right after that collision with Rojas. Look at Savage. Great, took it away. great run by Savage. Terrific. Knew exactly how much time he had to get there. Perfect. Right side. It's almost like he was teasing Batata into that pass. Now it's Coop Stanisic with a 325 to go, first half. But Baltimore back in. Here's Drago. Pushing it too far in front of him. McCutcheon wins the ball with Savage there with him to help. Now Stankovic gives it back the other way. Gets it back from Chapman. A 2-1 to one lead. The lead belongs to the Sting right now, but Baltimore's coming. 
Stankovic. Outside. Right foot a drive off the glass. Shinifu looks to settle, but the sting get it. Klopas will run with Rojas. Shinifu fouls it. Holding. On uh, Richardson. We're going to take it the other way. Yeah, well, Shinifu cut across him, uh, put his body across him, and got his shirt pulled for his trouble. But he gets the inside, and there's, uh, he's, he's bowled over. He gets the inside shoulder. Stankovic shooting as we're back to the live action. Knocked back the other way. Shinifu at the midfield line. Up for Tim Whitman, trying to roll off Alonzo and Kraft. Good ball control by Whitman, but now Kraft. That was artistic looking. Gets the crowd into it. Shinifu back for Franz Matthews. Two to one, the lead belonging to the Chicago Sting. In our inaugural telecast of the MISL here on ESPN, Shinifu dances left. In a corner, it's going to go off the boards and in. Richard Shinifu taking a shot that scoops down a sitch nose. He should have stopped. Well, I did say a few minutes ago that uh, Stanich is subject to unhappy errors from time to time, and I think that's got to be counted among them. He was probably expecting the ball off the boards to go across. May have been cheating a little bit to his left. Let's see the ball come off the boards, and unfortunately it caroms off his back and goes in as he sprawled, uh, maybe anticipating the direct cross. But Chinapu does well to get by Alonzo. Those good long strides of Richard Chinapu, and uh, very clear, obviously... Uh, with a defender in front of him, Stanisic should have been uh, tied up on that post there on those boards because that is the standard kind of play on that left side or the right side. You come in, you track it off the boards and hope somebody's in front. Uh, Stanisic, uh, therefore, has got to guard that post very tightly and just didn't do it. That goal by Chinapu gives him the team leadership over Andy Chapman with seven. Chinapu with eight goals now on the year. Last year, he had 22 goals, a total of 42 points, but you got to give Richard Chinapu credit, more credit when you find out that Half of his points came on the road, where in this league, it's a lot tougher to play. So Richard Chinabu not getting a majority of his points at home. He shows up for those road games just as well as anyone. Well, Buriano and Buriano the assist. And I was, we were both commenting earlier that Baltimore really hadn't sort of hit its stride yet. The power play is what got them going. Uh, no question about that. The power play opportunity really let them back into the game, and they converted on it uh, with such conviction, really. I mean, I think it was something like 17 seconds into the power play they scored. That's tremendously deflating to a team such as Chicago, who's worked so hard to get a two-goal lead, has looked good, and then gives up an unhappy goal that way. It takes a lot of the steam out and requires a lot of reconcentration. They never did recapture that concentration, and Chinapu took advantage of it. Now they've given up another goal that they must feel a little unhappy about, so they've got to... Uh, Get their, get their mental attitude sorted out now for the next few minutes. Tough goal for Chicago to give up because unless things change here, they will have seen a 2-0 lead go by the boards at halftime. Chapman broken up. Ben Collins turning it back the other way. Chicago with Batata. Batata, as we mentioned, has scored in seven straight games coming into this one. Back for Bosfire. Right side, a little room. Crumpy takes the shot. Blocked by Savage. Crumpy again with it. Trying to sneak by, but Savage will block that. Ronson over the midfield line with some speed. Chapman will cross to the left. Knocked away, Ben Collins, good defense. Up for Batata. Takes a while for that ball to get there. Batata wants Drago. Savage right there. Here's Krumpy. Quickly for Drago. Krumpy, edge of the arc. Back for Batata. Chicago, with a lack of crisp passing, they cost them there. Deflected over to Krumpy. Heads it far side. Drago, great save. Attention. What a beauty on Drago. Boy, the touch came late, but he came very strongly. Knew he couldn't get to it before Drago had it, but he got his hands up in the air to block the header. Nice oh, idea by Crumpy oh, wait, oh, wait. on that header to the far post. And a foul is going to be called on Chicago's Batata. That's eight fouls for Chicago. Their next penalty wouldn't occur until they get 12, but with a minute to go, that's not very likely. Yeah. Shinifu over the midfield line. He has that last goal for Chapman. And Stanisic with some acrobatics there to clear it out. Drago looking for it. There's Chinapu working both ends of the floor. He was upfield on the attack, came back to defend. Baltimore's defenders attacked good as pass. well as, if not better than anyone. Very good pass from Stankovic to Chinapu playing off the board, but uh, Chinapu's pass at the end, not good. Chinapu asking to be taken off, taken off now. He's pretty tired. The cameraman survived that, all right? Hardy bunch those cameramen. Yeah. He's indoors. What do you want? You know. <laughs> I mean, uh, he's lucky because uh, right. have you seen the latest football injuries in the sideline? I mean, those guys get crunched. 
That guy's pretty safe. Anyhow, I was just saying, Chinapu's last pass was the pass of the tired players. He did ask to be taken off, but he uh, ran into a great position, and Stankovic served it nicely off the glass. But the final pass into the box, not good. Uh, I want to talk a little bit later on, too, about Bruce Savage and the way he's marking Drago, because uh, he's doing it very, very intelligently. And Drago, I've got the one goal, but it wasn't because of a breakdown in the marking. It was just uh, another, there were other reasons for that goal beyond Bruce Savage. Box fire up for Batata. Less than a half a minute to go in the half. And Chicago has seen a 2-0 lead, although that's not a great lead in indoor soccer. But they've seen it go down to 2-2. Right. Has it go out of play? And it's Baltimore ball. Right in front of the blast bench. You mentioned Kenny Cooper as the head coach. I think that ball may have hit him coming back from the stands. His assistant coach is Jim Pollahan. His general manager is Dan Counts. And what they all have in common is that they had all played for Kenny at one time. So he has promoted from within and is very familiar with the team that surrounds him. Stankovic turning it back inside. He's dangerous even in the closing seconds. Off the glass. Child heads it down and he just didn't get it the way he wanted. Rodson off the boards. Stankovic missed. Rodson again. Looking with two seconds left. Bosmeyer will get it. And that's it. The horse draws, but we almost saw a goal inside of the 10 second mark in Baltimore. Almost, Seamus took a lead into the dressing room after they had trailed for a good part of this game 2-0. And Paul Child with yet another superb chance. He's gotten the one goal, a very critical goal in the power play. And we watched the goalkeepers uh, go off the field, each having given up two goals. A good first half work for each of them. But Paul Child had a chance to put his team in front. And uh, as Danisic committed himself, he could not quite get enough power in his header. So it's starting to heat up here in Chicago. We're at the end of the first half of play. Drago and Kucharski for the stick. Child and Chittable for Baltimore. We're even at two exceptional and they've been right up there all season long by the top of the pack and it's no coincidence that Kenny Cooper stresses all kinds of work on his specialty team units that's where uh, sometimes you can get an edge with the team yes oh there's no question about it and the, uh, the, the power play situation worked well for them the uh, the restarts the corner kicks and so forth have not looked as sharp but Bruce Savage has looked sharp and he's marking Drago and we talked just before the half about that that particular matchup uh, there you see Drago um, because the key to playing Drago, uh, there are lots of keys, and there are many times when you can't do it, but you have to establish as a defender the right amount of distance between yourself and him, because if he's the kind of player who, if you close him up too tightly, he will use that to his advantage and spin away from you, and he's so quick on the first turn or the first pace or two that you're dead. So you have to play off him a little bit, but not so far off him that he's able to control and work you one-on-one. -on -one. So. Savage, there you see Bruce. Uh, Bruce has done a good job indeed this half, uh, in the first half rather, playing that kind of distance on Drago and not allowing him the opportunities uh, that he's had in, in previous matches for the Sting. Bruce told us before the game, Seamus, that he uh, has some difficulty with Drago because Drago likes to receive the ball near midfield. Other players may get it where they're back to goal and he has a little more time to react. And plus, Drago's lateral movement is a concern because he can turn on each side. We looked at both coaches, Kenny Cooper and Eric Geyer. Eric, well-dressed, we mentioned him before in his first game as the head coach of the Chicago Sting. He's got the guys playing loose. They had been playing tight, at least according to previous reports. I got to see Chicago for the first time last weekend in a game with St. Louis, but they were extremely loose. At that time, Eric Geyer was an interim coach. It's tough to say goodbye, though, to Willie Roy. He has a tremendous overall record. He brought two outdoor titles to Chicago. When you think of the Chicago Sting, you have been thinking about Willie Roy, so like Ray Klebecka, it's tough to see him go. Well, I was impressed by what Eric did in his first match when they played the Express uh, game I saw here in Chicago because they were not doing well. It was 1-1 at the half, and uh, the New York Express had frustrated them by dropping a lot of players back behind their own red line and uh, shutting down uh, Granitza on his quick uh, touches uh, as, as serving as a kind of a post figure. So he changed to a 3-1-1, three defenders, one midfielder, one attacker with overlapping defenders, and that opened everything up and gave them the scores. Before the second half starts, we'd like to remind you that the 86-87 MISL Media Guide containing everything you'd want to know about the MISL and its players is now available. In addition, for the first time, the league is publishing an unabridged rule book and schedule made available for you. You can obtain the guide for $10, the rule book, and schedule together for five by sending a check or money order to MISL Publications, 757 3rd Avenue, Suite 2305E, New York, New York, 10017. Second half is underway. We'll see if Baltimore picks up where they left off. Drago trying to cut around Savage. Play, 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 play. So 
the right side, Alonzo, who now has Savage in a switch. Go, go, but go. Savage wins the ball for Boreano. Quickly, the blast looks to counter. Child over midfield. 2-2 two -two tied, third quarter just underway. Chinapu, a blast score! Richard Chinapu. Oh, get the radar gun on that one, Seamus. That one oh. has to be going close to 90 miles an hour. What a bomb. What a bomb by Chinapu into that upper corner when everybody in the park was once again expecting a cross. But he just put his head down and just buried that one in the upper corner. Stanisic diving, but I don't know if he hadn't saw it. Never mind, have a chance to, uh, to get to it. Here's the good little pass. Everybody worried a little bit about the center, but this time it goes to the far right, and it just has too much power and pace for Stanisic to get his gloves on it. You would have needed the FAA maybe to track that one down by radar. That shot was moving. Richard Chittapu's ninth of the year and second of the game. That comes from a difficult angle. On one hand, you want to blame the goalkeeper. On the other hand, how do you stop that? That's a rock. Players said that he wanted to make the overlapping run simply were not appearing. Burphy can't take it around. Mines Burks. Sting captain finds Kraft. Nice deke on Chinapu. Over the midfield line. Good dribbling to the right. Rojas broken up by Brad Matthew. Burks blocks that. Rojas couldn't get there. Chinapu can. Three on three. But Baltimore coming strong. Great tackle by Alonzo. Again, no hesitation. He just flat out goes out and wins that ball. Here's Whitman. A rocket blocked by Alonzo. Drago chasing after it as McCutcheon lifts it the other way. Drago looking. Blocked. He gets it around Matthew. He's in the corner. Down by one. It's deflected off Matthew. Drago was waiting for Alonzo to begin his run into the box. But anytime Drago has that ball, it's interesting. I think Baltimore is trying to take the ball into the bench. Souvenir time. Savage looks like he tripped on the carpet. Alonzo breaks in. Drago was unmarked for a second. That's enough time for him. Gets free again for a moment. Alonzo scored! Tied at three! And maybe some confusion on the Baltimore bench in inadvertently led to that goal. Plus, Savage fell down. Well, Drago was out there for a long time well, without the attentions of Savage. And eventually, Savage made the substitution. came out to mark him, but arrived and arrived late. There you see Savage coming in late. He gets away from him for the first time. And through the screen of flares, Alonzo keeps it nice and low. He often shoots very, very high, does Alonzo. But this time he gets it down low and puts it in the corner. Now look at Drago getting away nicely. You can see the space over there. He doesn't receive the ball very well. But he gets away from Savage with that little flick. And then the touch and the low shot, really no chance whatsoever. Alonzo from Drago, his fourth of the year, after two goals that were unanswered by Baltimore. It's even now at three. This is a direct kick. Remember, no more indirect kicks in the MISL, so a goal can be scored right off one of these set pieces. Chapman right out to Furphy. That was blocked. And now the Sting with a chance to break out. It's three on two for the moment. Chapman hustling back. Rojas leads. Kuncharski nipping it, but it's blocked. Is Rojas. That goes upstairs. Crumpy was wide open on the right wing side. So that is it. We'll have a timeout here. It is dead even. Three goals apiece with a minute 14 to go in the third quarter from the horizon in Rosemont. For Drago. And there's Savage wherever Drago goes. Savage right back to McCutcheon. Dangerous there. Furphy looking for it. But Chicago doesn't score. And wide open on the right is Chinapu. If he's seen by Kersovich, his first shift of the day, takes the shot and Stanisic blocks it. Chinapu was wide open and he would have been able to walk in and try to get that hat trick. But that's the first shift of the day for Mirosad Kerovic, 10 years in Yugoslavia's first division. But Tata. Looking near side with Drago. And that's broken up. Collins after it. Kersovic over three lines. And it may take him a little bit just to get into yeah, the game here. I that's think you're right. His head was down very yeah. much on that rush down the left-hand side. If he had just uh, looked up a little bit to the far side, as you mentioned, Chinapu was wide open. It would have been the easy go-ahead goal. Magali sending it the other way. And now it's Chinapu. Ken Cooper trying to get Karavich into the game here in this third quarter. Casey uses him in the fourth. As time runs out in the third quarter. So the next quarter is going to decide it. And at the end of three quarters of play, Baltimore tied up with the Chicago Sting 3-3. Three three. We'll have the closing quarter for you when we come back. This is the Major Indoor Soccer League on ESPN. And uh, the good, uh, nice cross by Alonzo shows that he can make these runs as well. 
Batata set piece out to Verts. Right foot a drive is blocked by Stankovic. And here comes Stankovic from Chinapu. Chinapu with two goals already this afternoon. Stankovic runs it with Verts off the boards. He's passing that ball there, not shooting it. Collins knocking it away for Batata. He got by Paul Child. Two on one if Batata can get the ball. Blocked by Savage. Drago was wide open. But it's a tough play for Batata to make. Plays it up now for Drago, and that's yes. blocked. Shinapu. Savage had to make that decision and leave Drago and go to take Patata because it was a two against one situation. He had to go to play the ball and not to sag off and leave Batata alone. He couldn't possibly have done that. He had to go and play the ball. Contain, contain. Batata with it. Why not? Holding it. Back out. Collins. You could hear someone yelling contain, contain, but I couldn't pick up whose voice that was. Batata looking off the boards. Gets it back and fight all alone. Magali. Fourth way. Chicago. Well, very good work by Chicago. Good persistent work. The kind of effort that Eric Geyer has been talking to them about. And Batata set, does it all, really. Look at this good move. It gets him by Buriano. Buriano makes a good sliding tackle, but goes to his feet. He goes to ground. Batata stays up. And it's an easy goal for McCauley. But... Uh, the defense had to collapse over there as Batata gets by Buriana. Buriana commits him if he goes down, which is maybe a mistake because Batata stays up. Somebody has to go out quickly, and it's Child who's out quickly, and Furphy does not react to the middle to cover up uh, McCauley. Uh, when he had, when Furphy had, uh, had had to do that, did not cover up McCauley. McCauley had an easy go-ahead goal. Well, you know, if he misses that one, he doesn't sleep at all tonight. But as it is right now, Pat McCauley's goal is the go-ahead. Chicago leads it 4-3. Leads for Ben Collins. Trying to play it right back, and Murphy is there. Collins himself doesn't believe he did that one. No. Chinapu, nice tackle by Batata. Especially since he had managed to draw Bruce Savage off uh, off the Drago's attention for a while. And that's tough to do. Murphy, right through. Nobody there to knock it by. Whitman will try it. Off the glass, Murphy was open, but he couldn't get his feet set in a position to knock that one home. Normally, when Furphy's there, you can just about put the red light on. Well, that one looked like a tremendous opportunity for him. I think he had even more time than he perhaps realized, and he therefore went uh, for the very difficult uh, side volley with his back almost to the goal, where he's maybe had a chance to control it a bit. Chinapu on his left foot, another rocket. That was just inches high. Chapman holding it. Right foot, it drives. Stanisic leaping. He may or may not have gotten a piece of that. That was too tough to see. Drago heading it down to Batata. Batata has made the all-star team each of his three years in the MISL. Oh, plays wonderful great. skill. Pancharski for Drago, deflection wide. But that doesn't even happen were it not for the flair and skill of Batata, who's putting on a show for this national televised audience. On the left, Stankovic. 4-3, Chicago leading it. Child for Ronson. Back out, Stankovic. Cutting to the right. Using his strength. Stripped away, Batata to Alonzo. The referee says play on. Drago open on the right. Alonzo trying to cut it across and Savage. Another great defensive play. Now Batata back heels for Alonzo. Right across, it's blocked by McCutcheon. The game starts to open up, coast to coast. Here's Child the other way. 4-3 Chicago. Child cuts Stanisic backing in. But he made the save. Chinapu leaves it out, Whitman. Stankovic breaks, brings it back. Look out, the drive, touchdown, Stanisic. Oh, what a play that was. He was backing into the net, and then that shot caught him off guard. We're going to Klincharski. He'll play it all the way back to Stanisic. For Alonzo, off the glass. Batata, who's had a magnificent game, cuts to his right. Tackled away by Chinapu. Four minutes straight up remaining in the fourth quarter. The Sting leading four to three. Looking for Drago. Off the post, score, Klinczarski! Oh, Drago makes that play, and it's 5 three, Chicago. Well, Savage did a good job on Drago all game long, but that's really not enough. The man has two goals and an assist today, and that one is the absolute backbreaker because he did it with his back to the goal, and without even looking, we'll take another look at it here. His back is to the goal, he just flicks it off the screen, now, uh, once again, wide open in front as Chapman reacts much too late to Klincharski. There was not a defender in sight. Klincharski buries it. 
Listen to the assist this is for Drago. Back to the goal. Terrific overhead. Savage can do nothing about it. And all alone in front is Pincharski as Chapman arrives late and the defense really fell apart. But what well, a great piece of intuition and initiative. Let's talk about McKenzie. His role is sixth attacker. And McKenzie is now, the, as you mentioned, down the goalkeeper shirt as we look at Mickey Pincharski celebrating, which means, of course, that they will have six field players. And one, uh, one of whom is a designated goalkeeper, but he is going to be joining his attackers uh, to try to get Baltimore back into this game as they trail by two with only uh, 3.52 to go. There you see him on that number one shirt. That's one of the strategies they use in indoor soccer, but unlike hockey, they don't change them on the fly. They can only do it during that. Especially at this stage. Near side. Chinapu for Child. The turnaround. Block. Loose ball. Chinapu. Out the post and out. Murphy will get it. I was wondering if that ball could even get through. There were so many players blocking the goal. Chinapu with it. And it hit the inside of the post and came out. That scared the goal judge. McKenzie to Furphy. Right side, Chinapu. Off the glass and get his own ball. Stanisic out of the net. Score for Stankovic. Mike Stankovic and the blaster with it wide. And it's Chinapu who is down to the floor. He's okay, I think he, yeah, he's he, back up. He, he was, was the one, uh, he made the initial, all the, did all the work really on this. Uh, the ball got away from him. He went courageously diving after it as Stanisic came out. Look at Chinapu now. The ball off the wall, he goes after it, takes the full force of Stanisic coming in, but sets it up for Stankovic who gets around that ball beautifully. And Stanisic does well to get back, but can't knock it away. Should Stanisic have come out that far in that situation? I don't know. Bobby Vosquez was right there. I was a little surprised that he did. It looked like Vosquez was in good position. But look how well Stanisic does to even get back yeah. and recover, but uh, can't quite carry it away. So I think he made a slight error of judgment to go out with Bob Vosquez there, but uh, it's a 50-50 call on his part. But it hurt him in the end, and he tried valiantly to recover. But it's now down to a one-goal lead, and we have 2.43 to go, and they will still play with six attackers. Give Stankovic his seventh goal of the year from Chinapu, and I don't know if he's got a clause in his contract for goals against Chicago, but that's five against the Sting. Klopas waits for some help. Slows it down. Cuts to his right. Rojas hold it. Still hold it. Killing some time. Finding Burks. Takes the drive off the post. Rebound. Klopas save. McKenzie. Great save to keep the blast chances alive. But time is running out. 25 seconds. Back the way to Burks for Klopas. McKenzie made that play. Well, that may not have been pretty, but it worked. Yeah. 